Okay. <laughs> you ready? Ready. Now her, now her good ear is the other ear. Okay, I'm gonna be over there. Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. okay good. Yeah, then I can say anything I want here. That's right. Now, now, to, now is the time. Now the time. <laughs> <laughs> Get back. <in. laughs> okay. Good morning. Today is 11 April, the year 2022. I'm Dr. Dave Thompson, a volunteer at the Palm Springs Air Museum here in Palm Springs, California. As part of the Veterans History Project of the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C., we conduct interviews of veterans and civilians who participated in our country's military conflicts, especially World War II. Today, I'm here at the museum with uh, uh, fellow volunteer Diane Thompson and special guest Craig Walter, Walter. And today we have the honor and the privilege of hearing the story of Mrs. Helga Walter. Uh, Mrs. Walter was a teenager in Germany and Czechoslovakia during World War II. And I know she is a really nice person because she's my next door neighbor. <laughs> Helga, glad to have you here. here. Okay, Helga, uh, first of all, would you please spell your full name, including your maiden name? Yeah, Helga Doris Rustemeyer, that's my maiden name, Walsher. Rustemeyer, how do you spell that? Rustemeyer with, with an Y. But, well, spell Rustemeyer for me. R-U-S-T-E-M-E-Y-E-R. We had real good friends uh, in, in Evansville, my hometown. Their name was Rushmeyer. Oh, okay. So, kind of close. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Maybe it was the same, because like you say, when they came to Ellis Island, they, they changed a lot right. of stuff, didn't they? Yeah, and, no, my father always always mentioned that it was with the Y, the Meyer, because it, it, it's, um, what's the Meyer with an M-I-E-R was more common. Oh. So this, this was more... Distinguished. M E Y E. Okay. Uh, and uh, when were you born? November, 5th of November, 1927. 1927. And where were you born? I was born in Bonn, the Beethoven town in Germany. Bonn? Beethoven was. Oh, that's where Bonn, he was. Bonn was famous for Beethoven. Okay. <laughs> How do you spell the. B O N N. Well, is that the is that, that the was capital? The, that was the actually that was the capital after the war. That's what. And I then it went back to Berlin. Oh yeah, I remember a time that Bonn right. was yeah that right. was yeah when they well I guess that's because uh, Ber uh, the, Berlin the, was cut right. to or whatever. Right. Hmm. Okay. Um, and your father, what is his name? His name is August Ostermeyer. Okay. And uh, what did he do? Uh, he was, um, when he came out of the First World War as a captain, he, uh, he had already a law degree, and he went into industry, and he was the head of various uh, companies, and um, especially in, uh, he, had a, he was the head of the company in 19, I think it was 28 to 31, of a big machine, uh, uh, what do they call it? A ma machine uh, building, manufacturing. fat manufacturing. Uh, when he was uh, asked to join the party in 1931, uh, uh, and he refused, and he lost his job, and uh, could not get another position until 19. 39 until he was drafted and because of that we moved to Berlin in 31. Okay, so um, You were living in Bonn all this time? No, no, I, I just lived in Bonn for about two years until a baby and then my Then my father got this position in, in, in what they call Braunschweig uh, Germany and uh, that's when we had to leave there in 31 because of his refusal to, to, to the Nazi party. Right. Now, now um, well, tell me a little bit about his experience, World War I experiences, mm -hmm. if, if you know any. Uh, well, he was drafted in 1940. No, no, World War I. Oh, World War I, I'd, uh, he, was, uh, he was fighting in, uh, in France 
became a prisoner and was mm -hmm. only released in 1920. They kept him for two more years. Oh. Until then he was released and he went to, uh, to Bonn. Yes. Okay. And then met my mother and, and got married. And your mother, what was her name and her maiden name? Her, my mother uh, was Augusta, and strangely enough also, uh, Jurgens was her maiden name. And she married uh, and moved to, um, to America, to Elizabeth, New Jersey, uh, in 1912, I believe. And um, uh, her husband, a German husband, then also was the owner and or founder of, um, of a metal and thermite corporation in Elizabeth, New Jersey. And she had two children, my mother, my brother, and my sister. And then he died at the age of 36 on Christmas Day in 1918. Uh, and Spanish when the war ended, Spanish, Spanish flu. Uh, did, did no, he, he had a he had an embolism after a uh, operation, and um, and then my mother, as a German citizen with two little children. Uh, stayed in America until 1920 and then went back to Germany with them. Okay. So they were really American citizens at that time mm -hmm. because of their births. Yeah. And there they met a... my father and got they got married and that I'm the product of that. <laughs> um, yeah, I'd ask because my grandfather in 1918 died from the Spanish flu. Uh huh. Um, now you're well. Let's talk about your father's side of the family. I mean, I. I assume, well, how far back can you trace, have you traced your ancestors at all? No, not much. I never met my grandparents, they're okay. all on both sides. But they were, were already dead But they the were time. German, pretty much. Oh right? yeah, yeah, they were yeah. all, um, as a matter of fact, my father, my mother, their grandparents were all born in a town named Essen, which mm -hmm. was famous because of the crop, crop works there. Yes. Yeah. And. Um, so I, I never met them, and I never really, unfortunately, yeah. ever asked too many questions about them either. <laughs> yeah. So, you, you know, was your family very religious? Did you go to church a lot when you were growing up? My father was born a Catholic. My mother was Protestant. And um, my father, being the oldest of, of that family, was expected to become a priest. And... Uh, he realized that that's not what he wanted, and he also experienced um, uh, when he went to church, especially when he went to confessions, that the the priests were very um, inquisitive, more than they should have been, and he didn't like that, and he uh, decided at I, th I don't know what what age to leave the church, and I guess. He became, you no. Know, from then on, I don't remember them being very religious or mm -hmm. we never were church goers as, as such. So, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but we were Protestants. And you had, I don't know, you had two stepsisters then? Is that what you're saying? Or, uh, I have one half sister and one half brother. Oh, half, half, yeah. half and half, yeah. And so how much older than you are they? Well, one was born in 13 and one was born in, in 18. So they were seven and almost 14 years older. And what were their, what's their names? Uh, my brother's name was Carl with a C and my sister's name was Ilse. Okay. Um, did, they, did he have to serve in the war? Yes, my, my, my brother was, was drafted uh, into the um, uh, uh, flock, uh, what is that called, anti-aircraft yes. uh, uh, right. division or whatever it's called, mm -hmm. yeah. And he became a prisoner at the end of the war too, mm -hmm. but not that that long after the war he was released. Yeah. Okay. Um, did because I, they're a lot older than you. So you did did you were they? Well, did you have a lot? Of, what did you do for fun when you were growing up? Basically. Well, my my brother was already out of the house, and then my sister. Um, I really didn't see that much either because she got married at, at uh, almost 
she wasn't even 18. She was married a, a doctor and moved out uh, also. That was in, in 30, um, what was it, 35 or 36. And so I really grew up as a single child, yeah. Right, but, but you had other friends and your kids in your neighborhood that you played Oh, with. yeah, yeah. I had lots of friends in Berlin, and we had, uh, uh, had a lot of, in those days, no television or anything, so we were just outside sledding, skating, mm -hmm. bicycling, and all that kind of stuff, yeah. yeah. And uh, did, did you start uh, school in Berlin? Or? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, and yeah. where did you go to school? I went to school right near where we lived and uh, for four years. It's called um, the Volksschule, which is uh, until, yeah, the, like fourth grade here. Mm -hmm. And the age of 10, if you wanted to go to, like, go to college or, or have a better education, you went to a... Uh, what they call a seum for girls and gymnasium for boys. So uh, I entered the Lyceum at the age of 10, and then that's where you had no choice of subjects. You learned languages and all of that, and you stayed there until graduation, until 18, yeah. And this is public schools that you went to? Uh, <clears throat> well, it's, uh, you have to pay for it when you go there, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, my, there was a, a due every... Oh. Every year, every month, yeah. Okay. Um, now, when you were in school, did they talk about Nazism and stuff like that? Did they try? No. You never no. noticed. <clears throat> no, 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 no. But going back to you, said your father sort of got in trouble with the Nazis because he didn't join the party. And yeah. do, what was his reasoning? Why did he not want? Well, to? he. He just didn't believe in the in the plan, and uh, and he just didn't. Um, he was more of a of a German, more of maybe a what do you call it, a nationalist or something. Or, uh, uh, he he just didn't believe in that, and and um, uh, and he took the consequences. Mm -hmm. And unfortunately, he never he had to uh, be like a consultant in Berlin to just make a living. And then I remember my mother, my mother's uh, late husband, had left a trust, so she had the dividends from that trust every month, and that's what we actually lived on, uh, of, of those dividends that were transferred to a German bank, yeah. Did your mother speak English? Yeah, yeah. She learned when she was in the States, you think? Or oh, yeah, what? yeah. She was in the States for seven years, and then, uh, or eight years, and... I guess had it also in school, yeah. Did you have English? Did you learn English in school? Did you have? Oh yeah, yeah. I learned English starting at ten, mm -hmm. but that's more of a Shakespearean English. It's not of a, a conversational English. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. And then French and then Latin, yeah. You remember any of your favorite teachers in school? Uh, yeah, there were a couple of professors, and um, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, did you did your father have a car? Uh, in Berlin, I don't know. I don't think we needed a car. No, okay. no. What part of Berlin did you live in? In a <clears throat> suburb of Berlin called Grunewald, which is a beautiful suburb with a lot of greens and sort of a res strictly residential area, woods and lakes, and it's nice. Before World War II, did you do any traveling to other countries or anything? Um, yeah, I went with my mother a few times to Italy on vacations because I uh, I had pneumonia a couple of times <laughs> already. <laughs> and um, uh, just as a vacation, yeah, we went, uh, my mother and I always went by ourselves uh, to... Uh, to, it was called South Tyrol, which is Italy. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> when you were in school, let's say you were getting up in the, say, 37, 1937, 38, you would have been probably in what grade would you, or you have been? Um, 10, I would have been in, in first grade in the, uh, in the, in the Lyceum. <clears throat> in the, and then how old every, you, every you, year you, 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 you would have been 10, 12 years old, something like that. Yeah, well, the, the the part was that when we had to move to Czechoslovakia, I had to leave the uh, the school, of course, 
and there were no German schools in Czechoslovakia, so I was tutored for two years uh, privately in, in um, English, German, and math, those three languages, uh, three subjects. And then that didn't work out anymore, and then my parents sent me to live with my uncle and aunt in Leipzig, which is Saxony, Germany, um, to go to school there. Is that where the horses are? Uh, in Leipzig? No, oh. no, no. Those are Lipitzan. That's oh, a different oh, that's one, right. yeah. <laughs> okay. and, um, and I was there for about four months until we were bombed out there. My, the house was completely damaged. The school was gone. And um, uh, there was, yeah, there was a big attack at, at, uh, yeah. well, at well, night. I want to go back to like 1939. Yeah. <clears throat> um, had your folks' parents been talking about or how that there might be a war coming or anything? Oh yeah, 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 yeah. We could we could sense that. As a matter of fact, as it was strange as a child, with talking about wars, I always envisioned I don't know why that there were bombs going to be falling and I'd be running away from the bombs. Mm -hmm. I have no idea where that came from. This is the way I I envisioned. The war with bombs coming and being attacked it was very strange. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, <clears throat> anyway, we. So, do you remember uh, September first, nineteen thirty-nine? What you were doing, or were you in school, or? Well, we were doing yeah. Well, we were <clears throat> we were at home. My father sort of like predicted the the what was going on and yeah. and following Hitler's ideas and ideologies. Had you um, heard any of his speeches or anything, <clears> like on the radio or anything like that, Hitler? They probably did. I know he read his book, uh, and uh, yeah, he listened. I'm sure that he listened to it. I, I, I don't really remember but that But you don't much. remember listening yourself? No, but I did, I did remember <clears throat> going to the Olympic, the, Olympics were in 36 no, in Berlin. 36, that's right. And I remember I went to a, uh, a um, uh, uh, I don't know what we would call it, uh, some kind of a occasion that we went to the Olympic Stadium and, uh, and Hitler and his uh, entourage were, were driving around uh, mm. the, uh, the stadium there. I don't remember what what the occasion was anymore. It was a, a small girl, so I yeah. wasn't that interested anyway. <laughs> yeah, right, yeah. Okay. So you left Germany, uh, is that because if starting, uh, Berlin was being starting to be bombed at that time? No, 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 no. My father was, <clears throat> was drafted. Oh, okay. And then, as I said, he, he was certainly too old to go into combat. He was 50, in his 50s then. Right. So they used his um, experience as a, as an, um, uh, what would you call it, as, as his um, uh, organizer and being in, in, in heads of, of companies. And they sent him to uh, Sleen, this Z-L-I-N, which is a Bata town. Bata was a, a Czech who developed, uh, was a big socialist, and he developed a big shoe factory. That's how he acted in, in sort of a middle-sized, uh, middle-priced shoe, shoe factory. And he um, uh, built a whole new town uh, all around his, his place, and all his workers had houses there for himself, and the hotels and movies and everything else. <clears throat> and then he... Uh, after doing the shoes, he did tennis balls, he did uh, uh, all kinds of rubber items, he did, uh, I forgot what else, there were a couple what, of other things. It, so it? anyway, my father was sent there to diversify this factory into German uh, uh, or army material. For instance, the tennis ball and the, and the rubber was then used for floats and for rubber boots or whatever the army could use. So he had to diversify this whole, whole thing. What was the name of the company? Bata, B-A-T-A. -A, yeah. Hmm. yeah. Okay. So uh, we stayed there until 
uh, <clears throat> more or less the Russians approached and there was uh, there was a you knew that the war was coming getting very dangerously mm -hmm. and in the meantime of course our place in Berlin had been um, Berlin had been bombed but our place in Berlin had had been saved in the in the suburbs there and my father <clears throat> had organized to move everything to Dresden to storage <laughs> all all his belongings because Dresden was one beautiful the Florence of Germany that we never thought would be bombed and he thought that would be a safe place and the place in Berlin was untouched at the after the war and the place in Dresden was completely gone, gone which was ironic yeah yeah that was yeah. fire bombed and yeah burned so, but you went to Dresden? And then we moved, well, the reason we moved to Dresden was really because I became engaged very early. I met an Air Corps officer in Czechoslovakia, a German Air Corps officer, whose parents lived in Dresden and they had a tremendously big house with lots of rooms and everything. Mm -hmm. And um, they offered to take us in as refugees, more or less. And that's where we we moved uh, after what, what trying this? to flee the Russians and, and, and getting out of Czechoslovakia. What was his name? Uh, his his my fiance's name was Gottfried Kohlmann. M A N N. And he sur survived the war. He was he was a first lieutenant until he was shot down. He couldn't fly anymore, and then he was a. Um, uh, more on the ground, airports, uh, mm -hmm. uh, Air Force. And then um, he was still stationed in Czechoslovakia. He stayed there until the end of the war, like around, I think it was like April, April or March. Um, the, we talk, talked about the, the partisans. He was shot by the uh, partisans, which is like a resistance. Yes. of Czechoslovakia, right. they lived, mm -hmm. they worked with the Russians that were coming mm -hmm. in into Czechoslovakia and he was um, fatally wounded there and, and, and died in a hospital, which we didn't find out until two years later because the, we had no idea what, what happened to him for two years um, until a, um, um, a comrade of his who was next to him in the hospital came home to Germany and found his parents and, and, and told him that he had died. Mm -hmm. So that was that was my the, the end of my engagement. <laughs> yeah. um, when you were uh, in Germany in school, and I guess maybe, in, I don't know, um, I know that the boys had went to like the Hitler Youth and they had things for the girls too. Did you ever have to go into any of those into organizations? The, 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 yeah, they call it the Hitler Youth. Yeah, you get drafted into the Hitler Youth. I think they drafted me when I was 10 years old. Um, and I, I was intrigued with their uniform at that age. Mm -hmm. It was a, a suede, beautiful amber jacket with a navy skirt and a leather... Uh, a, a black tie and a, and a leather a knot like a, a thing. It was it was terrific, but we really it wasn't that political. We went on camping trips. We sang songs. It wasn't all that that political. But of course, when I went to Czechoslovakia, that all stopped. Yeah. And um, they tried to get me back when I went to school in Leipzig. Um, and then they threw me out because I wore lipstick. I wasn't allowed to wear lipstick. So they said, we don't want you anymore. <laughs> so luckily, <laughs> I got out of it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so did you have, in Czechoslovakia, did you have German teachers in, in uh, No, schools? none, none. They were all Czech? They were all, all Czechs, yeah. And, and the, the, um, uh, the tutor was Czech, but he spoke German. Otherwise, there was no German school, no. Did you learn Czech? A little it? bit. I mean, yeah. If, uh, not not as much that I could have a conversation, but you do pick it up very quickly, yeah. My father had a... Um, they, they socialized only with Czech people, which was 
reported to the Gestapo or to the army. They didn't like that because he was a German officer and he was mm -hmm. not supposed to associate with the so-called enemy. Yeah. But he did, and uh, we we did. Uh, we, we yeah, he was uh, he was pretty much in in uh, in, in de actually the army re the army protected him from being arrested by the Gestapo mm. for a few things and also like listening to um, a foreign uh, uh, broadcast. I remember my father always listened to uh, to the uh, BBC, BBC mm -hmm. at night. Bum 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 bum, you know yeah. and. And that was, I mean, I, I remember sit, him sitting very close to the loudspeaker, so he was very hushed up because you never could trust your neighbors. I mean, you just never mm -hmm. knew who would report you or whether a maid or anybody who, who would see you. And that was, in those days, sentenced by death if they caught you. Did you have some good friends in school? In school, yeah. I had good friends, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Some of them visited me in Czechoslovakia, and uh, no, I mean, in, in, when you're in Czech, were you okay? You're in this Czech school. No, no, Czech. no, I wasn't. That was it. I was not in school in Czechoslovakia. That's oh, why. You're not. That's why I was sent to be with my uncle and oh, okay. to get into school, back into school into different mm -hmm. subjects Just and different things like that. until until we were bombed out there. Yeah. Okay. So when you were in Czechoslovakia, did you get bombed there at all? Um, no, 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 there was no bombing except that planes did fly over or once in a while they they dropped a, a bomb that they didn't drop somewhere else and yeah, what right. they call blind, blind blinking out sort of, yeah. it was suddenly a, a, an explosion, they didn't want to take it back I guess to the base. Right. <clears throat> so, and then you ended, was that back in Berlin where you went back to school? or, or? No, no, I went, I, I I left Berlin school, went to Czechoslovakia, then went to Leipzig for four months. Okay. Then I had to come back because the, the house was gone with my parent, with my aunts and uncle. And um, uh, well, did, did you get bombed in Leipzig again? Yeah, yeah, oh, okay. yeah, yeah. There was one attack that was completely. Yeah, our house was with phosphorus bombs, and um, mm -hmm. it was burned down completely. Oh, wow. It was a big, big five-story apartment house and uh, the so fire started on the top and burned all the way down. So where were you? Did they have I was, uh, I was in, in, the, in the house, in the cellar. Oh. <clears throat> and then we tried to... Uh, all the, all the uh, people that lived in the house, of course, uh, we started a, uh, what did they call it? A water... A, a bucket brigade. A bucket brigade uh -huh. trying to get the thing out, but... Yeah. Didn't was that work. during it the was, day or at night? It was burned all the way down. Was it during the day or at night? At night, at night, yeah. And then we, we there was a little park outside the house. We tried to save what, what, what we could because my my, my uh, relatives lived on the on the second on the first f first floor, so we could carry out some things that they wanted to save, and um, put them all in the in the park and stood guard uh, through the next few days until I remember the school was gone, there was a big church that was burning. Um, it was it was a disaster, I mean it was pretty bad. And then uh, my father had sent a security guard from the factory in Czechoslovakia to look for me because they didn't know, they heard on the radio, you know, there was a bombing attack. So the security guard finally found me and then took me back to Czechoslovakia, and, and I stayed there, and that was the end. And I didn't have any school for about a year, and then until we went to Dresden, and I went back to school in Dresden, until that school was bombed, and that was, and I had to, well, we had to flee anyway. So, was that because the Russians were coming? Well, the the Russians were were taking out to Dresden too. We are. But we were no, we were completely bombed out there too, so, yeah. and um, my sister and I, after the bombing attack, uh, my parents wanted us to leave, and uh, and they wanted to stay and and stay in their in their place with the few belongings they had saved, 
and my sister and I left uh, a few days later as refugees, of course, and went towards the American section, towards the West section, where my she had been married, and she knew some people, and we could survive there. So we um, went by train and truck. Well, the Ukrainian thing right now is is a big brings back memories of of what 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 took place, you know, at that time. It's. Um, it's uh, yeah. Pretty, pretty chaotic, I guess. Hmm. Pretty chaotic. Everybody's oh, it was chaotic. I mean, I, I brought you some pictures of what Dresden looked like after the war, after the bombing. It was three three big attacks. The Americans flew the uh, day six, uh, two two attacks during the day, and the British flew at night. And it was Churchill's idea at the time, towards the end of the war. It was in the middle of February. Exactly what Putin is doing now is trying to intimidate the civilians to cap, uh, cap, capitulate, is that the word? Mm -hmm. uh, and, and, and aimed to destroy towns that were just filled with, with civilians, refugees, and children. And uh, that's why he decided to, uh, to, to bomb Dresden. There was no industry there, nothing. I mean, it was just all the refugees coming from East Germany fleeing the Russians. It was filled with all of those refugees and then, of course, us living there. And, um, and that was, uh, uh, yeah, pretty sad. I think there were 35,000 people got killed during those attacks. And you were there and at we that were, time? Yeah, I was there with my... But luckily, we lived in a very large house. My future parents-in-law had a very large house with a wine cellar on the bottom that was very solid. Mm. And uh, so we were able to be downstairs and, and safe, yeah. And the section where they lived was also very residential, a little bit away from the center of town. Um, there was a lot of destruction, but that particular house had more cosmetic damage than mm. one quarter of the house was hit. but. But the rest was pretty well uh, stable, you know, all the little decorative stuff that was all there, that was all gone, but... Uh, was it hard to get food? Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Went on, I uh, had got a truck, and then uh, partially on foot. Uh, it was just a, it, it just looked like, like the, the refugees and whatever you could carry. I know I had my, my, um, my dowry, I remember, is a dowry in Dresden for when I wanted to get married oh, right, after the yeah. war, and of course that was yeah. that was all lost and so. stuff yeah. like that. And then we left, and my parents, which was very difficult because we didn't know whether we were ever going to see them again, they, but they decided to just stick it out there, uh, and they also left later on with a few things that they belong, which I have in in my house right now with a painting or a rug or some some silver and stuff like that. It's the only thing they, they saved. And uh, they, they finally got out towards the Rhineland where the, the British uh, were. And we went towards uh, the sector in, <clears throat> in near Hanover where my sister was married. The Americans came. So when the American occupied, I remember, uh, they came with the big tanks and uh, trucks and whatnot and the constabulary with the yellow scarves. I remember sitting on those tanks and waving. So they were really very friendly. And I remember seeing my first black person, a black soldier at, at that time, you know. And, and they, were, they were very nice. They left um, whenever they requisitioned houses where they wanted to stay. They left a few things like chewing gum or bar of soap or, or something like that. Mm -hmm. So when my sister and I lived with a, um, a friend of hers that took us in, um, of course that place was requisitioned. And my English in those days was not, <clears throat> uh, not that great. I could hardly, like I said, it was more Shakespearean kind of <laughs> stuff than, yeah. 
but but I we could make ourselves understood a little bit. So they took over the place. But when they left, we found all these little oh. things for us that they <laughs> left in drawers. It was very cute. So, yeah. and then and that was the end of the war, uh, May fifth, and. Um, and that was it. And then right, we lived mostly under the American occupation from then on. You didn't go back to Berlin? No, never went back to Berlin. Stayed in Hanover? No, stayed in that area. And then uh, we, uh, we, I don't know why, we went to another uh, place in Hesse. That's where I met my, my first, uh, first husband. And I worked for military government there as an by that time, my English had gotten a lot, a little better, um, as an interpreter, and um, this was in Essen, did you say? Hmm? Where did you? Where was this? Fritzlau. It's called Fritzlau. It's a little town in, in Hessen near Kass Kassel, they call it. Kassel was completely bombed out, also, but Fritzlau was a very small little town, and they had a military government there. And for some reason, I, <laughs> I became a. a an employee of the military government. I worked for a guy named Captain, Captain. Uh, what did I say yesterday? Fresky? Sis Greek. What was his name? He said he was Greek. Siski or something like that. He was a Greek, Greek extraction, yeah. 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 And did your, were your parents there too? No, we didn't know anything about our own parents. By that time, it was um, uh, somehow. Oh, my brother! My brother was um, released as a prisoner, and he uh, uh, had been married. Uh, and his parents-in-law lived in the Rhineland, where my parents escaped to, and they stayed with him. And somehow, I don't remember how how we even got together. They. Uh, by that time, it was nine months after the war. We, there was more communication, and, and the, the, the letters post office was working, and, and telephones and everything. So we found out that my parents were safe in the Rhineland, and they found out that I, my sister and I were were safe in, in the other area. And eventually, we we came together and met again, and then they moved because. I, I was able to, um, having my first husband, uh, he was an officer in the uh, army, and uh, he arranged a, a place for them to live and so forth. So we all got back together again. So what, what year did you get married? In 48. And what was his name? Uh, his name was uh, Bill or William Lechner, L-E-C-H-E-N-N-E-R. He was German extractor. His father was a pharmacist in New York, and um, and he spoke very good German, and uh, that's how somehow we met and Was got he together. an interpreter, or what was No, no, job? he was in the uh, liaison, what was it called? Liaison and security uh, officer, yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he was in the army first in combat, but then they... They utilized people with certain experiences. Yeah, and um, so you, well, did you have any children in your first? With him, no, no, no. no. I got very quickly divorced. Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay, okay. So then, so then what? Yeah. How long did you work? Uh, so in, then, in no, and, oh. and I, I worked there until forty-eight, and when we got married, I had to. Um, uh, give up my German citizenship because I married an American. Mm -hmm. I became a so-called war bride, mm -hmm. and I was stateless then for until three years later. And then we had to leave Germany within three weeks after the marriage and go to America. They did not allow anybody then to stay. So in '48, I came to this country, and. Um, Lived in New York and then in New Jersey. I got a divorce. Were you working at that time? I was, um, yeah. I when I first moved to New Jersey, I there was a new beautiful um, 
suburban uh, department. So Lord and Taylor opened up a, 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 a big store there, very modern. What do they call it? Some, uh, department, the, department store. Yeah, no, no. It was a, um, it, in those days, the department store sort of spread out and, and did smaller version. What do they call it? Suburb, uh, suburb I, I forgot what the name of it was. Anyway, they opened it up. <clears throat> And I applied for a job. I didn't really have that much experience for anything else. So they, I, I was working for as a, as a salesperson there. And that was pretty pretty nice, actually. And uh, I was making $45 a week, I remember. And my husband had bought a, bought a car in the meantime. And I, I went by car to, to work, picked up another co-worker and all that. That was pretty nice. And then I worked myself up <clears throat> and then later on I switched jobs and I became a buyer in retail and um, and then I uh, met my second husband who was also uh, uh, Craig's father who uh, who knew my first husband <laughs> they were they were in the reserve together when mm -hmm. um, when 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 the war was over and I guess they all came back. They they had to sign up for the reserve, and they had to have a a two week um, uh, camp every year to to uh, get back into this I don't know whatever they were doing there, and and he met my first husband and they. They realized that they were stationed in Wiesbaden and different places in Germany together. And then my husband um, uh, said, you know, I met this guy in the reserve. Why don't we have him over for dinner for <laughs> night? <laughs> and he came over for dinner. My marriage was very rocky by that time. And he came over for dinner and one thing led to another. Uh, a few years later, we got, we got married, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> And uh, he was, as I said, uh, he, he was a major during the war and um, he was really in combat in France and everything else and then also worked for military government in a different town and um, what came was his uh, name? back. What was his name? Uh, his name was Milt Walcher. Okay. He was an engineer and he worked for a, uh, General Adelin at this point. I think that was a German company as a matter of fact. We had a division here. Did he grow up in New York or where? No, he he was uh, grew up in Newport, Rhode Island. Okay. Yeah. And the um, German extraction. Yeah. Okay. Right. And then and then I. Um, Do you know when his parents or came or his ancestors came to the United yeah, States? Yeah. Yeah. I I, I uh, wasn't that fond of his parents. <laughs> 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 or what part of Germany did they? Yeah, uh, they were Polish. They were. They came, we actually came from from Warsaw, Polish. didn't they, or yeah. somewhere? Yeah, yeah. Probably a very small town. V via via Germany, yeah. Oh, okay. So, <laughs> yeah. and uh, pre pre World War. We were, yeah, we were. And then. And so what, what? What kind of work was he doing? Uh, when you met him, he was out of the army. By I, yeah. Time. Oh, yeah. He was in the reserve then also. So and he, then he worked as an engineer for General Anlin, and then he uh, we were living in New Jersey, and then moved to uh, to uh, uh, Long Island, hunting Long Island, where both boys were born, and then he moved to United Aircraft, and um, and worked on the uh, lunar module for the. Um, space program at the uh, United uh, Aircraft, uh, and it's <coughs> Hamilton Standard. Do you know much about that? Why don't you go over there now and sit next to you? Sure. So, what was he doing then? Uh, do you guys think, want some water? You want a sip of water? Sure. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. So yeah. So what was he? My my memory uh, as a as a you know sixty nine. I was eleven. Mm -hmm. um, the space program was a very romantic 
Endeavor, Life Magazine, you know, Walter Cronkite, oh, yeah. Kennedy, obviously. Uh, so my my impression of it all was just might as well have been Walt Disney, you know, kind of fantasy. And until that moment that we all watched it on television, it was pretty much a fantasy. And then it became this thing that, you know, to this day, I still have a coat of color slide of the still of the moment that my father took. And I don't remember his joy viscerally, but I know it was just a huge race, uh, obviously. And unfortunately, after all those years of long hours, they laid a lot of people off uh, after, the, after they landed. Mm-hmm. And, and my father was one of those people who sort of had to move on mm-hmm. from, you know, from his position. And he ended up uh, you know, moving on to the New York Times, uh, totally unrelated to aerospace, but as a kind of executive manager um, and uh, we left, you know, the West Hartford area where Hamilton Standard was, Windsor Locks, and went down to Westport, uh, Southern Connecticut, Fairfield County. Mm-hmm. So, um, but that era was amazing, you know, apart from following all the New York sports teams, and 1969 was the golden era of every sport in New York. The space program was this whole other thing, and he'd bring maps home and, you know, it was just, you know, little, uh, cufflinks with, uh, and pins with spacemen. Mm-hmm. I mean, it was really a golden era and, uh, just the beginning. And I'm, I, I have to say years after he passed away in 88 with every sort of echelon that we reach with the space program, uh, I think of him, you know, just like, what would he think? And I, I think the most amazing one was Mars. And I, I really like missed having him around to mm-hmm. see that because it was yeah. it was just incredible. That was the same sort of feeling, even though it wasn't manned. The the, the visual of that was yeah. powerful. And where where were you working during all this time? I was in in, in Westport also. Yeah. But you said you was it. Uh, you were purchase, purchasing or uh, oh no no I was <clears throat> by that time I I I didn't work then anymore I, oh okay and I, I never I, I wanted to go into real estate yeah. I got my real estate license and then my husband thank you so much <laughs> my my husband didn't want me to do that because he that meant I had to work on weekends so I just dropped that and then I never went to, back to work okay. no raising that raising. was an era where where. Some wives didn't have to work, if they, unless they had to. Yeah, exactly. So, so that's, you were raising those guys, right? Yeah. <laughs> and so you were living you, in West Hartford? In West Hartford. Hartford and, and but then you moved to... While we were in West Hartford, however, uh, and she just kind of skipped a little period of uh, your boutique, Oh. She, she started a business with two <coughs> other right. friends. I forgot about that one. And that was not happening, uh, you know, as far as a woman kind of running yeah. uh, her own thing. And uh, she started this boutique called Charisma, which was a, uh, with a K. and uh, With two partners. Two partners, an uh, American and a French woman. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, that was interesting as a child to see that because I was suddenly seeing her, you know, not just going to Lord and Taylor and shop for us, but actually run her own yeah. thing. And, you know, she still has the old plastic bags and stationery to this day from that time. They had a very specific look <laughs> and it lasted a few years. And then, you know, well, we had to move. Yeah, and then we had to move. So, yeah. and we went down to Fairfield County. Fairfield County, where's that? Uh, that's Westport, Greenwich, um, Southport, uh, New, New Canaan, York. Ridgefield. Yeah, it's it's basically a bedroom community up the railroad from New York. Oh, you know, commuters. Okay. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Stamford. And where did you go to school? Mostly. I went uh, to public school in um, Westport. Uh, went to high school, a place called Staples High School, as did my brother. Um, and uh, I, yeah, just basically the standard high school period, uh, freshman to senior, and um, had a chance to go to prep school and 
quickly said no because I liked the school I was in, but that was a thing that was starting to happen. Like, you want to go to this boarding school. And did you play sports in school? I did. I played tennis and um, played, I played a lot of sports sort of on an intramural level, but, but tennis as well. Did you play tennis when uh, the kids were when you? Were I racing? started in Westport. Yeah, yeah. I joined. Um, uh, as a matter of fact, no, I started in, in West Hartford already. We had an indoor club there, and then when we moved to Westport, we uh, they had a, a, a large country club there, and we played tennis there. And, and private, there were a lot of places with private private tennis courts, so we did that. Yeah, and indoor. That was a great time. I was uh, uh, right on, on on the Long Island Sound. There was boating and the beach, and uh, for the kids, it was terrific to grow up. We joined a yacht club. They a little sunfish. What was it called? Sun, very sun, very sun modest uh, uh, boats that we were involved yeah. in. There were obviously larger boats at the club. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But we had a, um, I believe it was a thistle uh, class, yeah, thistle, that's right. uh, single sail with a yeah. jib and like 17 feet, 18 feet. And, uh, we had friends that had a Sabbath. You know, yeah. We were not in Newport and we would use that. And yeah. Like that. And we spent a lot of, a lot of time in, uh, Newport in the summers while America's Cup was up there. <coughs> I meant Newport yeah. Beach. But, oh, yeah. Newport Beach, the other Newport. Yeah. 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 Oh, Newport, Island. Yeah, right. Newport. Yeah. I, I did my, uh, dental school, uh, going into the Navy between my junior and senior year to orientation, Navy orientation at Newport. Oh. And went up to, met some guys from the East, we went to Cape Cod. So that was before the bridge was built, because that changed everything. Yeah, I guess. The Jamestown I Ferry was the way oh, oh, yeah. from Providence, and uh, once the bridge was built, yeah. Newport was, yeah, pretty, you know, yeah. the gateway. Yeah, okay. But, yeah. So did, and then did you go to college? I did. I went to Bowdoin College in mm -hmm. Brunswick, Maine. Mm -hmm. I went uh, two year, first two years, and then I went to London my third year, uh, and I came back for my senior year, majored in English Lit, okay. which is, you know, an abstraction in this world uh, <laughs> to choose a major like that. Uh, not really, it's hard to connect the dots now, but it stretched my brain, I guess, mm -hmm. and uh, I, you know, I remember things, but. I don't watch Jeopardy enough, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> what, uh, so what, you, what has your business been all these years? Uh, my business, uh, I got into um, remodeling houses briefly um, and then basically sort of fell into uh, film production and photography production and became uh, basically an art director and a prop stylist uh, more recently into photography, still photography. You know, celebrity portraiture, advertising campaigns, movie posters, mm -hmm. uh, and did that since 96, starting in Venice, California, and uh, I still live in LA and View Park. But the digital world has changed the business quite a bit from when I was there, it was analog, and. Things had to be done the day of the project, as opposed to in post-production, for a week later. And you know, it, it's it's just technology changed a lot of people's workflow. I think. And your dad, what did he do for the Times when he was the New York Times? <clears throat> well, he was really hired to diversify the Times, um, uh, which was then. Uh, I remember the first tour I took of the Times were all these little. Printers were sitting there with their visors, you know, and doing this. So he was there to diversify and to also um, invest in other businesses that the Times had. So, uh, which was an interesting, interesting time for him because it was so different from the space program and from mm -hmm. the engineering and all that stuff that he did before. So it was more administrative. Uh, than anything else, yeah. But the, um, as I remember going to, uh, like he brought a, my high school uh, newspaper class into the Times one time mm -hmm. and we saw the press and it was all block press, letter set. Yeah. Uh, Pre-digital world. so funny. And yeah. it was really something. 
in there. It was like a Charlie Chaplin movie. <laughs> just all these things going on. Right. And, you know, yeah. conveyor belts and just like you see in the movies, like the new headline coming down. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, so that was a great time. Computerized everything, yeah. 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 Yep. <laughs> so when did you first come to California? Uh, in 1999, the end of 1999. But, and your husband in, passed away in, did you say 88? Mm -hmm. So what did you do after he passed away? Uh, I stayed in, in, uh, in Westport by myself, and I had to, to still, we still had that house. And I, um, uh, you laugh, but, but I, I really just, um, got tired of, uh, of doing a lot of work and being on my own, and um, and when my dog died, <laughs> mm -hmm. I have for 14 over 14 oh, years, no. uh, and and I just uh, felt that I needed a change. And what, um, what kind of dog was it? An it, Irish it, Setter. Oh, yeah. Maybe. And uh, what was it? Her Irish what was Setter, her? and then I had yeah. What was her name? Kelly. Kelly. <laughs> of course. Kelly. Yeah. <laughs> So anyway, when I, I had this big house on my own and uh, I uh, visited one time here because I had a friend who was raving about this whole area and I came out to visit for two weeks one time in February in of 1999. Mm -hmm. And I, I went to the place in Mission Hill near the tennis courts and I realized how nice it was and uh, playing tennis and the pool and the people were so friendly and, and the real estate prices were good. And, um, and I came home and I decided this is it, I'm gonna sell my house and move to California. Plus the boys were on, this, on the West Coast and I had a good reason. And uh, I bought a place on Sunningdale uh, first and uh, that was it. Um, uh, after your, your husband died, did you go back to work then? Uh, vaguely, yeah. I, I worked for a German um, uh, a company also as a, as a manager and, and then I, I quit there. I, did, mm. I didn't care for it then anymore. So I. And you guys came to, when did you <coughs> all move to California or, and what prompted that? Uh, well, my brother, my brother left the East Coast uh, pretty much right out of high school in '74, and kind of took off on the uh, proverbial Western sojourn. Mm -hmm. You know, hitting all places uh, left of <laughs> Connecticut, yeah. looking uh, for colleges. Yeah. yeah, looking for colleges, and but just finding a lot of adventure. And you know, we would get letters about where he was visiting and uh, you know my my indoctrination to the West was largely through him uh, you know and photographs and and tales and all that and he he's pretty much been out here and what, since what's, that what's, time what's your name Stephen 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 and Walter so did he go to college out here somewhere? he went to uh, Evergreen State mm -hmm. College in Olympia right and uh, I'm not totally sure on those years uh, and then he later went to med school I went to Reed's first in Portland. Oh yeah, and he went to Reed Reed uh, Reed State College or Reed College right. Reed College in Port yeah. in Portland. Um, but uh, yeah, he's now um, went to med school in Michigan. Med school in Michigan, and then uh, years later, kind of uh, parlayed that into uh, being sort of a therapist, uh, trauma related therapy mm -hmm. in uh, Santa Cruz. Well, because area. of the uh, because of his accident. Yeah. Not, well, I'm not sure that. Practicing. I don't know. Right. Right. Yeah, he was in an avalanche uh, as a skier, so mm -hmm. that's another. He should be here to <laughs> describe that. That's uh, another story. But the one, the one thing I wanted to say um, before was when, really, when my mother came out here, <clears throat> and I sort of experienced her looking out the window at the palm trees and the sort of oasis that this place is. It, that was really when I started thinking about where she'd been and the movement 
of one's life. You know, uh, some people don't experience it. Some people experience it quite viscerally. And I started, you know, kind of wondering privately, like, what does she remember? You know, what what is goes through her mind in this peacefulness, you know, and mm -hmm. serenity here. And, uh, you know, all the memories are black and white on TV and in the movies and, you know, just all these portrayals that kind of accumulate in your head, but she lived it. Mm -hmm. And like my father, you know, from his side, I think buried a lot of it just because there's, it's just such a intense gestation of experience. And, uh, so that's when I, I think started sort of inquiring uh, diplomatically into <laughs> her story and, you know, she'd get pictures out and mm -hmm. remembers things as you see today, just very vividly still. Uh, and uh, I got more in touch with this sort of victimhood of, you know, a German civilian in this case, which you just don't really hear about uh, through movies and you know, I think very few books. So that's been a real sort of journey for me to, to get that. And I know I've spoken to you for years about it and I'm glad we're finally sharing it because yeah. she, she yeah. has a lot in her mind from that and her, and her heart, you know, so. So how long did you live on Sunningdale? Um, four years. I sold it in, in yeah, I sold it in 2003 until I saw the open house on Lakeview and I happened to come by there and I looked at it and I, uh, it had been on the market for quite a while I think mm -hmm. and uh, I liked it, I liked all the, 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 the space and the, the shelves and the cabinets and the, I could really spread out because I still had a lot of stuff in storage that I couldn't use in, in Sunningdale. 30 years of life in Connecticut. In a 10 room house, yeah. So, um, and that's when I decided to move to Lakeview. Mm -hmm. Also, I liked the idea of being close to that swimming pool and the spa, mm -hmm. which now, of course, isn't heated and <laughs> going, going uh, really downhill. Chapter two. Yeah. <laughs> And, Hopefully uh, not 16. <laughs> yeah, but I haven't regretted it. Oh. So I have. So you played a lot of tennis at Mission Hills? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Until, yeah, until I was about 82. Mm -hmm. And then I quit. Yeah. yeah. Did you ever play golf at all? Never golf. I've, mm -hmm. I was never interested in golf yeah. for some reason. Do you play uh, cards or? Yeah, I play, I play bridge. bridge. Uh, we, we had a, a, a bridge, uh, sort of a, like a little bridge club, and then we had an individual, an individual houses, and uh, then we played at the tennis club certain days, and I still play bridge now once a week, yeah. Yeah, yeah I enjoy that. Gives me a little <laughs> mental stimulation. <laughs> Have you done much traveling since uh, you've been in California? <clears throat> since when? Since whenever, or since, since oh, you've I, been to California? Oh, I traveled, I traveled, uh, well, once a year I went back to Germany to see my family when I was living here mm -hmm. and took the kids at many times. Did most of them survive, your family? Died? Yeah, my family, luckily, they all survived, yeah, my mother died in my father died in 65, my mother died in 74, and my sister died in 96, and my brother also two weeks later. So I have no more family left at all uh, at this point. So uh, uh, I, uh, I went on my own and just visited friends, and most of my friends have died. This is the disadvantage of getting old, you know, they all die ahead of you. Mm -hmm. And um, so now, I'm, since 14, I, uh, 2014, I haven't really gone back anymore. Then the pandemic started and traveling got to be uh, yeah. really more difficult with the security, etc. So that was it. Did you travel anywhere besides Germany? Oh, so. God, yes. Yes. <laughs> you you want to hear where it? I went? Yeah. 
<clears throat> well, in, in Europe, I went to, um, to Portugal, to Spain, to France, to uh, in time in London, which isn't really Europe. I went to uh, Austria, I went to Switzerland, I went to uh, uh, Germany, Slovenia, uh, Czechoslovakia, of course. Mm -hmm. I went back there several times. Um, so I mean, da, da, da. That's about Europe. Then I went to China, to Africa, to South North Africa. Africa, to where? You went to South Africa as well. Yeah, yeah. South Africa, North Africa. Um, Turkey. Turkey. Uh, you, you, were in, you were in Iceland too, right? Yeah, well, that was part of a, a, a cruise. Now these are these are these are trips that I took mm -hmm. on my own. Um, Russia, twice. Uh, Where did you go in Russia? Poland. I did, took, just took a trip to Poland in 2012. Uh, Russia. I went to Saint Petersburg, and then on this Baltic cruise, I flew there once, and then I took a Baltic cruise, and then of course you see. Denmark and Stockholm and Helsinki and Estonia and you see all these these places Amsterdam I was in Holland I was in Denmark Stockholm uh, all these these places so yeah it was interesting very what about, interesting. What about Australia have you been there no that part I never did I lived in Argentina Australia New Zealand was one place I wanted to go oh Mexico I've been several times. Mm -hmm. Uh, Hawaii, well, that's part of America anyway. So, uh, yeah, I. Yeah. Short, interesting. Well, short answer, hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was I very say, interesting. I should say. And you are recovering from a mishap. The what? You are recovering from a mishap. Now I'm recovering from a broken hip and uh, followed by pneumonia. And. Here I am, trying my best to walk again. <laughs> yeah. Well, you used to walk a lot, I know. Oh, God, yes. And Jessie, yeah. uh, how old was Jessie when she passed? Fourteen and a half. About the same as yeah. your other dog, yeah. Yeah. She was a great dog, yeah. We were, we were good friends, good pals. Yes. Oh, I, she loved you, too. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She did. That's what we did, yeah. And you yeah. were the last two... To see her yeah. alive and dead. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. Well, uh, we might be getting close to wrapping it up. Um, any parting thoughts? Uh, uh, well, like I said, I'm, I'm, uh, I, I feel like there's just a lot of unfinished uh, inquiry uh, mm -hmm. because I hear stories from her that I've never heard. Just casually, things come out. And, yeah. Um, I feel some sort of, you know, obligation to try to understand, you know, that time in history from her perspective. Like I said, it's not something that you really hear about much. It's not represented. Uh, I'm actually a writer, so I uh, have toyed with the idea of writing a play about it. Mm -hmm. uh, somehow, you know, introducing a character who's coming to terms with something, maybe through therapy, uh, later in life, trying to get that sort of internal reclaiming of, yeah. you know, being a victim uh, realized. But uh, you know, the it's been the, done before. Yeah, well, not from that, not from that POV, and I and I think you know, Ukraine, as she said, has really. Mm -hmm. reawaken that desperation that people live with. And, yeah, the uh, destruction the destruction and the, I, the misery of these people. I, I see her watching the news and I, you know, I'm kind of thinking about that whole catharsis. So yeah, it's it, it just probably will never end. We'll see it in cycles and uh, you've got these people who move on if they but, if they live. Yeah, Helga it sounds to me like when all this stuff was going on, you just realized there wasn't a lot you could do about it, and you just 
survive. I mean, you just uh, yeah, I mean, yeah, more I mean, or less. Yeah. Well, I went to very similar similar situations, you know, of fleeing and destruction and. But you never and and you never and, gave up, or you never said, "Oh, whoa, it's me," or whatever. I don't think it sounds like you know. I'm going, a, I'm going to deal with whatever it is, and we'll just go on and on. And on. <clears throat> yeah, and and as a as a very young person, and I was only eighteen at, when it really the worst things were happening in nineteen. Um, I uh, you you're really a survivor. You just want to go on and, 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 and put this behind you and everything and, and, and look forward. And um, it's, um, uh, now I realize all the, the years I've really lost as a teenager when I see what, what young people do here now and the freedom and, and all of that. I mean, we were a in a, too much living in, definitely in a, like a dictatorship, you know, yeah, and, and, right. and you were, uh, it, it was just a whole different life, which is hard to describe. And yet, you made it. A lot of people didn't. And uh, but they, uh, it 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 was thinking about it now. Again, it was amazing that that you did survive, really, because you you many times you 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 were hungry. Or you, there was no food. You had nothing but what what you had. Uh, 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 war at the time uh, when you had to leave and, and you, when you lost everything that you that was dear to you and uh, I, I, I was just fortunate that I didn't lose any family members and uh, that, that we all all survived that part. Yeah that seems like it well I guess it, it could still motivate you to move on as a survivor but I could see that really being a turning point if you lost immediate family, maybe you're not open to leaving the country, you know, you met an American, and, you know, things kind of opened up, and, I mean, it's just yeah. twists of fate. I wanted to ask you, uh, so the first few years, basically, Germany was occupied by the Allies and the Americans. By Americans, right. How did, did the people... How did the people like Americans, or did they? Oh, they, they were they very feel... relieved. Yeah, no, they had a good relationship <laughs> with Americans. Yeah, did they? definitely. I mean, Germany was cut into four zones: the, the British, French, Russian, and 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 American. So, I mean, we were of course restricted many times, and there were like borders between all that, especially between the the American and and the Russian zone. And then, of course, the wall went up in Berlin. There was a tremendous. Um, uh, uh, separation of, of people. I mean, when you imagine that on one street your your father lived and you lived on the other, and there was a wall behind it, you could just wave from the windows overnight. It was oh, yeah. it was just unimaginable. Luckily, we didn't have that. Did you have any relatives that lived in the Russian zone? Um, no, we, no, no. Actually, they all tried to to, to get over to the American zone. My my uh, aunt I mean, some and of them, uncle. You mean some of them did live there at one time, and then they got. <clears throat> yeah, like my uh, my um, my aunt and uncle, where I went to school. Uh, and and they had lost everything in in the attack when I was there. Um, they moved uh, also to uh, to the American zone, and then um, uh, her husband died. My uncle died, and my my aunt lived very close to my my where my family lived. Uh, after the war, um, my father was because he was denazified right after the war. Uh, be uh, got a very very important um, position back in Essen where he used to work, actually, um, with the uh, Krupp work. So all my my the relatives for, or, that I I remember all moved into that particular area also. So, so did the Americans control that? No, that, up, or yeah, it, yeah, yeah, Essen was also American. Uh, yeah, no, but I mean the, the, the Krupp Works, where they um, built the guns. Uh, yeah, that, that was, no, that was pretty much um, back into, into uh, I mean, they didn't make ammunition anymore, obviously. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. But my father had, a, had, the, um, had the job of, of um, 
getting all civilian there was a lot of damage of course and 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 property availability of of um, space so he had the job of connecting all civilian industries that were in different parts of the the country to get uh, rebuilt in in that area so they brought in a lot of places from all different places and they rebuilt their businesses in the crop uh, um, land more or less yeah. so that was that was a, a, quite a quite an interesting position at that time yeah. and um, and that's where he really was able to to get back to the life that he was used yeah. to more or less yeah yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, uh, and you know, when I think about it, it it's um, like I said when I was young, I I never really uh, thought about it. But now, being at this age and everything, or, or Craig's age, to think what people at that age went through and what they lost, and 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 uh, the, the misery they went through and all of that, I I never. You, you, you're sort of selfish as a young person, you know, you think about yourself all the time. Now I can't imagine what it must have been like at that, at that particular time of their lives to start from scratch again and, 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 and deal with, with losses, you know. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm now I'm very sorry that I, I didn't ask, even while they were still alive, ask more, more questions mm -hmm. of what it was like and how they felt. and. Mm -hmm. And, and, and how they dealt with it. Now it's too late. I can only imagine. Yeah. Kalga? Yeah. I want to thank you so much for coming well, and sharing Well, I don't know today. how much I could help you, but well, uh, I'm good. the first, I guess I'm the first German woman you ever <laughs> interviewed, right? Well, <laughs> thank you, David. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So, yeah. Really That's it. Thank you so much. No, yeah. you're welcome. You're welcome. Okay. All right. <laughs> so, so you were tell me again about what you consider the most scariest time you had or event that you had. Oh, that was towards the end of the war in '45, after my sister and I had left Dresden, fled from Dresden and settled in the area that she knew and was married in. We took a Red Cross course uh, at, a, at a, a little farmer's place. And when we heard the sirens going off, we were hiding in, the, in, the, uh, in an open barn, but could see the skies. And I, you could see hundreds of American planes approaching where we were, and uh, watching the first plane dropping the signal to, to to release the bombs, like it looked like a little Christmas tree, and then you saw the bombs coming out towards you, and uh, you knew you weren't protected in that barn and. All they did really explode, I don't know how many miles, or not maybe not miles, maybe a mile away from a fracking area uh, or oil, oil uh, area that they wanted to really bomb. But it was scary, you felt helpless and you knew that was probably you were gonna be hit. You know, we've seen uh, in movies and stuff where although They'll have like a thousand planes oh, coming. Oh, yeah, it was just, uh, it, hundreds. I we, we didn't count them, but it was like uh, many, 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 many planes. And kind of the information. And that was I the guess. only time I actually saw Americans bombing because at night uh, they were mostly British, and if they were American, you didn't. You were in a cellar. You didn't. You didn't watch them come. You just heard the explosions around you and hoping that you weren't hit, but... So uh, was it that you weren't, it, were not expecting them to come well, during I the mean, day, you, or I mean, or... The, the, the explosions were coming closer and closer, and you were... Uh, 
it, it's hard to explain the feeling that you have, but you were just trying to to imagine that that you were saved. But when so. you were in that open barn, oh. there wasn't time or any place to go where no, you would be no safe. No, no place. Then. There was no protection. No, nothing, nothing. Yeah. And all I could think of, my parents were far away. I don't know where they were at that point either. And all I remember saying to my sister, how will Fati and Muti, which is m mom and pop <laughs> of <laughs> dad, ever know what happened to us? They will never find out if this bomb is going to hit us. Yeah. So luckily it didn't. <laughs> was, the, was the sound deafening? Oh, yeah. Like, oh, I mean, yeah. it must have just yeah. been consuming. Yeah, oh, and yeah. That, and then yeah. vibrations of explosion. Oh, yeah, ground. yeah, definitely. Could because you, it was close could enough. Could you, you hear, know? The, hear the bombs whistling when they were coming down? The what? When the bombs were being dropped before they exploded, could you hear like a whistle? Oh, yeah, yeah, you heard the zzzz. <laughs> Yeah, you, know, you heard that whistling, definitely, yeah. 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 Yeah, it was a clear night, just like here in the desert, you know, blue sky, and you saw all these these planes coming. During the middle of the day. Yeah. It was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, that was a moment. Mm -hmm. That was, I think, the scariest moment of my war years, almost, of, of, of being, being hit yourself, you know. Right.